Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and we're going to look at more West Coast flea market finds. Those of you that have uh, watched my channel know that uh, we have a fellow out there, Scott, who's been very active out in the Pasadena area, doing some flea market searches and finds, and that uh, Scott has been sending me these in uh, to make sure that they work optimally, give them a tune-up, and... Uh, Go ahead and uh, help him to get these fishing again. Give him a second chance. Well, here's, here's the latest box of editions uh, that Scott has sent in. So uh, I think we all find that some of his reels are very interesting. And I can't wait to get a look at some of the ones that we'll be working on. And uh, we'll do some pretty uh, premieres of some videos. So most of the ones he finds are very unusual. Most of them that he finds I have not done a video on before. And uh, I really enjoy working on them and sharing them with you. Well, here's the first one. This is an Olympic Zebra 4000. And I have not seen this reel before. It's uh, made in Japan, which is where the Olympic uh, company was. And uh, this is a nice size reel. It looks very much like a Daiwa 4000 C-Series. And uh, it has the distinctions or characteristics of a 1970s, 1980s kind of a reel. A metal case. Seems like all those Japanese reels at the time did have condition issues with the paint. You can think, uh, for example, the uh, the Penn Silver series. It has the bang bail, which is a spring-loaded bail arm that's going to hit this uh, little extension on that handle arm, and that's going to cause it to, to drive and close. And uh, it's very durable. We're going to take this one apart. We're going to show you how this one. Uh, was made, and uh, we can show you how to service it if you happen to have one of those. Well, speaking of those uh, Japanese-made reels at the time, I think this one's probably a Daiwa. It is. This is a Daiwa 955, another one of those era reels. I'm not sure if this one was Japanese or Korean. Uh, I guess we can figure it out. It's the Brown series. It's the bigger one in the Brown series. And uh, let's see how it's doing. Very, very sluggish. This one almost clearly has got something to do with dried grease, but there's also a tangled line underneath the spool here. So I'm not sure if that's what's impeding the progress of that. There's the two for two, Scott, in terms of what we'll do some videos on here. Here's the reel I grew up uh, learning how to fish with. I don't even have to go any further than just look at the handle to know that this is that reel. This is a Centaur. It's a French-made reel. This is the fun of the half bale. That half bale assembly got me more than once when I was uh, out there fishing. I knew from the handle that that's what this reel was. It seems to be working fine, just a little bit of sluggish. I'm going to guess it's uh, got to do with dried grease and the like. But this is the Centaur Pacific. And uh, we're going to take care of this one for Scott as well. Made in France. Funny how the memories that you have. All right. We have a small Daiwa mini cast. At least I'm thinking it's the Daiwa. I like these. I've done a video on this one already. It goes back quite some time. And uh, really fun little reels. They're, they're, they're ultras. And uh, a lot of fun. Let's see if, see if we can get around to that one. Scott looks like he's had quite a few finds here. Look at this. We have another one. This is actually the color of the one that I grew up with. Same idea. Got the half bale. A lot of folks wonder why you see the half bale on the Mitchells. And you'll see that half bale on, well, like, real like this one. Uh, this is, again, it's the Pacific version. It's got that same, uh, same look all around to it. And it will uh, close over time. And... Uh, the half bale, the full bale, came out in the, I believe, the late 1930s or early 1940s when spin fishing reels were just making it. And that feature got patented. So the folks that were making reels that followed on, well, they either had to pay the patent price or they, uh, they had to find a, a workaround. Well, the half bale uh, was the workaround until that patent expired. There's an Abu. We've done a lot of the Abus. I think it's the 5000 series. Yeah, this is the 5000. And uh, we're not going to play around too much with this. This is a beautiful old one. You can tell by the handle. And uh, we'll get this one working for Scott. Now, 
Don't want to disturb anything with that. So if you, uh, if you like these kinds of uh, projects and you want to see all of them and not miss out on any of them, I'd ask you all to go ahead and subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, please hit the notification button. That notification button will tell you when I'm posting these videos and uh, then it'll give you an opportunity to select one, which ones you want to watch and which ones uh, maybe uh, have no interest for you. Uh, this uh, is going to be the Ted Williams. Uh, the Ted Williams was the brand of Sears. Ted uh, Williams, of course, a good bas uh, baseball player, Hall of Famer. I believe he's only the, the only baseball player that shares the distinction of also being a Hall of Famer uh, in, in the International uh, Game Fishers uh, Hall of Fame. But uh, they did enter into an arrangement between Ted Williams and Sears. He became the uh, uh, the name or uh, the brand name for fishing equipment in the uh, 60s. And uh, we've got one here. And we'll see uh, see what's going on. This one's got a drag to it. Didn't notice if it was releasing or not. Uh, we'll see what we can do with this one for Scott. If you have questions on these reels or any reels in particular, and maybe I can help you with them, uh, leave them in the comments section and I will try to answer them for you. This one looks like another Daiwa. What do we got here? Yep, we have a Daiwa. This is the Daiwa 7300H. I'm going to have to go back into my uh, my library, see if that's uh, that's one of the ones I have. This one seems like it it's not, I was going to say, it seems like there's a little bit of a bail issue here. So this this arm here is not catching. So a quick word on bail repair. A lot of times it's just not catching because it's got a lot of old dirt and grease and grime in it. And uh, sometimes it's as simple as just getting a penetrating oil in there, letting this uh, free up. And then if it frees up, you can... Uh, Restore it without taking off all of the screws and things. In this case, not quite sure why it should line up with this indentation here. You can see we manually we can get it uh, to attach, but mechanically it doesn't do that. My guess is it's just a lot of dirt and that that's accumulated in there, and then it'll trip back fine. So uh, I think that's it. I'm trying to keep all of these together. If I missed any, you'll certainly see them as they show up. And that's one of the reasons why you want to get into uh, doing the notifications uh, when you hit that. Finally, if you like Scott and you have an old reel and maybe you don't want to tackle it yourself, uh, maybe you want to have it serviced or restored or put back to the best condition it can be put back to, uh, well, I do reel repair by mail. And if you want to contact me, uh, just send me an email and a business card that follows. I'll be happy to provide you with that real repair information. Special thanks to Scott. He's been providing me with a lot of materials for the, uh, the videos. And I can't wait to get started on some of these to show you all a little bit more about the reels, uh, how they come together, how they get serviced, and maybe a little bit of the history of the companies behind it. So to everybody who's a first responder, thank you for all it is that you've done to keep us safe. To everyone, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.